This is how I glaze the drippy slippy mugs. I'm using wax resist. Um, it's just standard, I think it's Amico, but standard wax resist, watered down several parts of water to one part wax. Um, it makes it go on smoother. And what I do is I wax resist the same way I would uh, any normal piece, so across the foot so the dimple has something to stick to, and slightly down the side. And then with a finer brush, I wax up to the thick drip of slip. It's much easier to wax up to it because it overhangs. It gives sort of like a solid stop for the wax, so it's quite easy to to glaze in from this direction, oh, sorry, to resist in from this direction. It's quite hard to glaze without um, going too far. And obviously the movement of the glaze is going to be downward. So if you wax resist too far, the glaze stops just short of where it would want to stop anyway. And probably in the firing will run the rest of the distance. Whereas if you try and do it without wax resist and put the glaze on by brush, um, you'll go past it if you make a mistake and that's a lot harder to fix. That means the glaze is only going to get worse if it runs in the firing rather than better. Um, I have, I'm just using really cheap brushes for this because the wax tends to gum them up over time. Um, and I actually cut half the bristles out this one so that it's even fewer bristles so you can just flatten it against the surface of the pot and it will push the wax up to the divide between the two um, without having so many bristles that it makes a mess or goes past it or anything like that. So there we go, bottoms wax resisted and now that can just be dunked in clear glaze which will coat everything that you want it to coat and nothing that you don't first step in glazing them is to just quickly wipe them with a slightly damp sponge, uh, which I always do just to make sure there's no dust on the surface. Should be okay, but um, always better to be safe. And then I am brushing on Heath Ivory just around the rim. This is more for the gradient on the inside, which um, will go from the clear on the outside to floating blue. Uh, but the clear glaze I use is Hansen 20x5 and it doesn't combine that nicely with floating blue. The resulting colour is not great. So what I do is I just brush more on the inside and a little on the outside so that it's one smooth gradient between them. But the heath uh, means the floating blue gradient on the inside is really nice because floating blue and heath go very well together. Um, and I also brush some onto the handle just so that, because this combine, does combine nicely with um, the 20x5. So it makes it a bit more interesting than it would be otherwise. Bear in mind it's a clear glaze and so you would just see the neutral clay colour otherwise but this will flow and run and mix a bit. Next up is the clear glaze, which is um, Hanson 20x5. I'll post a link in the description. And I'm using the Cardent Puller. Again, that'll be in the description as well. Got it slightly wet so that it sticks better. Um, and then the foot needs to be wax resisted as well. Check that it's stuck on well and then just dip and out and give it a shake. And as you can see, the wax resist has stopped the glaze sticking anywhere that uh, the wax resist was, which means you get a perfect line of glaze around the base of the slip. So now all of the drippy slip parts are going to be glossy, um, and then the clear glaze brings out the colour as well. So they'll be more colourful as a result. Um, and then the clay underneath is going to be matte and unglazed.
The last glaze for these mugs is floating blue on the inside. Um, and I'm using a set of scales to weigh out the glaze on the inside. Um, it's a way of controlling how much glaze you apply and keeping it consistent across mugs um, that basically doesn't require any extra time or effort. But you do need to know uh, how much water is in, mixed in your glaze. Um, so that's basically when you mix it up, assuming you're making your glazes yourself or making them from a powder, you just control how much water you put in and then you'll know how much weight of glaze mixture you want for the amount of glaze you need on the inside. In this case I want to go just under 30 grams. Okay, 29, that should be a good application. And then I swirl it to get it round evenly on the bottom and then tilt it up and roll it to coat the walls and mostly up by the rim. Um, and this is, if you've got glazes that move quite a lot um, and get more dramatic where there's movement, this is a good way of making sure there's movement on the walls but the it's not too thick at the bottom because most glazes start to bubble and craze and uh, most glaze issues happen where the glaze is too thick so by having a thickness on the wall it'll sort itself out in the firing and look better for it so that should do it.